Daddy Lex, the people want another performance. Oh, God. You gotta give it to them. You gotta give them what they want. I gotta get my ready on. You gotta get out there, Natty. Natty Legs, bitch. I got a show tonight at the comedy joint. But before I hit the stage, I get my shit on point. I get my muscles loose with that jacuzzi fog. Then I get a portrait painted of me and my dog. I sit for a portrait of me and Mayor Cutie. Then I get it airbrushed on my booty. Then they paint it on a cake. I only take one. Those starving kids gotta keep my sitch tight. Drink 40 cups of throat coat while I cook in my quail. And after all that, I have my money detailed. Gotta have your cream steam. There's germs on money. And when it's all wrinkled, gotta fluff and fold, honey. Gotta take another bath in prehistoric mud. Back, back, back to my room where I get new blood. The only blood that works for me is blue blood, cuz. Natty legs, bitch. And a migrant named Lionel alphabetizes my vinyl while I dine with my gyno. And, and, and my jewelry before the show, I get primped and weighed. Then I go to the network. It's time to get paid. I elegant. That's what I be. So damn fancy. Got a diamond pussy. The diamond pussy. The diamond pussy. Diamond pussy. No, 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 no. No. Natasha, the budget for your special is out of control. We've got to keep this thing simple. Look, I can show you market research that proves people do not want to see effort. Uh-uh. I didn't get into this business to read. Okay, then I'll summarize it for you, okay? Specials aren't special anymore, and you're making yours way too special. You're spending too much money. I haven't even finished my intro yet. I know, I can still hear the music. This is the perfect time to rein it in. Have you seen these Louis C.K. specials? He literally gets off the bus, he wipes mustard off his shirt, he does the show in a t-shirt. That's a producer's dream. I can get you a t-shirt. That's what people want. No frills. Okay, I'll think about it. Thought about it, hell no! Okay, it's really annoying when you talk in tempo to the music, okay? Because it sounds like you're rapping. And, I'm sorry, but you cannot call the special Diamond Pussy. But I had a polish for the show! Okay, it looks amazing. But we have got to stop spending money. Shut the hell up, Mr. Wearing a Suit Man! Table flip. Don't flip, my, don't flip the table, it's glass, please. Thank you. Man, fuck this patriarchal society. Name of this special still be Diamond Pussy. That was a waste of my time. My show starts in 10. And I still got a whole bunch of errands. I got business, bitch. I need forever stamps. That's such a good value, got me super amped. One more thing I need to address. An unfortunate byproduct of saying yes. Down to the clinic, I'm a superstar. All those bitches know who I am. Okay, I'll pay, bitch. While they get the baby, they massage my legs. While they get the baby, I eat steak and eggs. Then I have the waiter bring a light dessert. Bye-bye, baby, mama's eating sherbet. I eat steak and eggs and lamb and ham. Post my meal and abortion all on Instagram. I get away with this, y'all, cause I'm famous and wealthy. Always got time for a selfie. I gotta finish this shit, get my ass to the club. I'ma do my show high. I feel 10 pounds lighter even with the stick And now my body's back to its pre-op weight It takes a lot of maintenance to keep all this juicy And that's how I keep this diamond pussy Now I'm ready for my show, I call it what I want Cause they want this shiny pussy from China to Vermont Fuck Ben and Jerry, they're a couple of wussies Binge on a pint of diamond pussy Diamond pussy, diamond pussy Diamond pussy Thank you. Thank you, San Francisco. Don't worry, it's faux. Oh, this is a dead fox.
It's amazing the clothes you can pick up at the animal shelter. <laughs> Hold this. It's disgusting. <laughs> Anyone else addicted to these things? So cool and new, we don't even know the side effects yet. <laughs> Literally no testing's been done. <laughs> I can make any Costco seem like midnight in Paris. <laughs> oh, is that a stack of Kirkland khakis? I thought it was the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh, look, it's Ernest Hemingway. Oh, that's just a drunk Native American. <laughs> Great to be here in San Francisco. I'm so happy that I get to, that I get to do my special here. This is my favorite city. This is where I always try to come. I recently came here to San Francisco with a group of my girlfriends. We were supposed to do like a ladies night. And we get here and the whole dinner, all they do is talk about their children. And the moms are showing pictures of their babies. And then the ones who are pregnant, they're showing like, what's the black and white picture of the skeleton? <laughs> so disgusting. <laughs> and I'm getting grossed out at the table. And then all of a sudden, one of them was like, Natasha, how are your dogs? I was like, they're pretty great. They're at a boarding facility right now. My pussy's still real tight. <laughs> And in 12 years, they'll die and I'll get new ones. <laughs> Pussy will still be tight. I just want to know what that feeling is that moms talk about. Like, new moms are like, it's the most amazing feeling, Natasha. You can't get it from a chihuahua. It cracks you open and you're born again. Like, I just want to know what that feeling is for like 10 seconds. <laughs> just to see if it's worth looking that awful. Because every new mom looks like she has been stranded out in the rain in an industrial city. Like, not Hawaii, Detroit. Every dad looks like a character from Lost. They're like castaways trying to survive the elements. I don't know if I should have a kid. I feel like I have to decide. Do you have one? You don't want to turn your pussy into Mount St. Helens? <laughs> Seems like so much work. And first of all, you'd have to like hang up with their shit drawings. Like, you know, it's like, I can tell that's your hand. It's not a turkey. And you can't be like, maybe painting's not your thing. <laughs> Gotta get the Uber driver to take it to the zoo. It just seems like it would be so much work. And I don't know if I would like love all of my kids because I have three dogs and I only really love one of them. <laughs> Do you have kids, ma'am? No. No? No, no one. I guess my fans don't give birth. <laughs>
you guys understand this religion? They have a floor of their temple dedicated to baptizing dead famous people as Mormons. And so obviously I wanted to see that. So I went to the church and they wouldn't let me in. They're like, I'm sorry, you need to take a worthiness test. And I was like, uh, do you mean a gullibility test? <laughs> I'm just saying. Here's what I don't understand. Republican, white, male, Christian dudes. I cannot kill a tadpole living inside of me. But as soon as it expands and comes out and grows up, you have full reign to pay it minimum wage or take away its health insurance. Blow it up if there's a war. Fuck you, Republicans. <laughs> Maybe we're not in the mood to turn our vaginas into lasagna. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have sex with someone in one of these states, make sure that one of you has a car good enough to cross state lines. <laughs> How can men judge women? Men create wars. Women create men. It's our one genetic flaw. <laughs> The worst thing a woman's ever done is fuck Flavor Flav. <laughs> Maybe supported the career of Josh Groban. <laughs> That's it. <sighs> Maybe I should just adopt a 17-year-old so I only have to raise it for a year. <laughs> By the way, I would rather walk in on my boyfriend jerking off while hanging himself than have him have one of those Call of Duty headsets on. <laughs> That's the one where you protect our country from your couch while you're eating a sandwich. I saw you nod your head, sir. How many hours a day? Six. Six? How old are you? 40? When Napoleon was your age, he conquered half of Europe. So, it's just something to think about. Are you married? No. Men don't even want to get married anymore. Marriage seems like it would be the best deal for a dude. You could like get someone to have sex with you for the rest of your life, someone to find your wallet every day, close the cabinets behind you, pick up your socks. Okay, it would be one thing if guys would take off their socks and leave them on the floor, but they'll like pick them up and then put them by the bread. <laughs> Why are your socks by the bread? Oh, they're not all the way dirty yet. I mean, I could see like a hundred years ago, because you see these TV shows now and movies and women are like, I'm 31, I have to get married. Like, I don't understand, what is the point? There's no point to a man. Like a hundred years ago, I got it. You had to get married. They wouldn't let women vote. They wouldn't let us read. We would, they would tell women if they read a college level book, it would shrink their ovaries. Like your dad would give some guys some land and some cows and you could just relax. And like, if you wanted a dress or something, you wouldn't get a job, you would just like, twist your dimples and talk to your husband and act like a baby, like, please, Mr. Sweetie, buy me a dress. <laughs> and then if he didn't give you what you wanted, you would just faint. Like, <laughs> they had couches made just for fainting. If you didn't get what you wanted, you would just get the vapors and pass out. Now we all have to work. <laughs> All these dudes, no one wants to grow up. There's like these hipsters, so many hipsters in LA. You know these guys, they'll be like 40 years old, wearing a flamingo onesie, and like <laughs> carrying around an old fashioned typewriter. They got a monocle, just like looking for pussy. Like, they're like calculated bros. Sorry if I'm calling you out guys, but it's like, They've all figured out, girls don't wanna fuck Polly D, they wanna fuck someone who looks like David Koresh. So they've all like growing these like long beards, like they think they're Ernest Hemingway. If Ernest Hemingway were alive, he would beat the shit out of every hipster. There would just... There would just be trails of bloody hipsters outside every artisanal coffee shop and beard waxing facility. You know these people I'm talking about, like people who have to wear their coolness? Like, not me, I have style, that's different. But like, <laughs> you see these guys, they'll have like, like Mork and Mindy suspenders and like a tattoo of a parallelogram. <laughs> and they like can't light a pilot light. They can barely wave. They're like, hey, I'm Beowulf. Okay, nobody's named that. 
Hey, I'm Nathaniel. Okay, uh, I'm sure your parents named you Nathan. In college, you were probably called Nate Dog. Nathaniel, that's like the name of a ghost. Not an emaciated barista with a Mr. Pringles mustache and a gluten sensitivity. Why do only hipsters get gluten allergies? Are they activated by American apparel purchases? I was talking to my friend, he was like 38, barely ready for pet ownership. We're having coffee, he doesn't have a job. And he was like, I think I'm gonna get into pickling. You should get into employment. These are the guys you're supposed to procreate with. This is the guy I'm gonna trust to be the sperm donor to the Asian surrogate that's gonna carry my child. That is a big decision in a gal's life. I just don't wanna die alone, you know? Cause isn't that why you have a kid? So you don't have to like die alone so that when you're dying, there's like all these people who have to be there that you've given birth to. They all feel obligated. But then I was thinking like when my Nana died, she was shitting herself and calling me the N-word. Like, I don't wanna be alone for that. That's a good time for some serious me time. So I am getting married, thank you. I never wanted... I never really wanted to get married. I definitely didn't want to get married. I, like, I don't want to have a wedding. I don't want to do vows. I just want to do concerns. <laughs> I have a few concerns. Um, first one, how attached are you to this Burning Man tradition? <laughs> Do you guys know what Burning Man is? It's like, it's a great place to go breastfeed your pet ferret. Um, and he really wants me to go. I mean, if I wanted to be a part of a dysfunctional community of white people in the desert, I'd move to Arizona. There's no showers. I need two baths a day. I know there's a drought happening. Maybe my two baths will mean people in Barstow don't get bagels, but you know what? <laughs> Something I have learned to deal with. <laughs> my friends will like, my friends will go to Burning Man. They're like, I go there to meet dudes. Okay, if I wanted to have sex with some creepy dude in goggles, I'd stay home and fuck a welder. <laughs> At least then I wouldn't have to listen to didgeridoo solos in between <laughs> orgasms. <laughs> like these, I'm sorry if anyone here is really into Burning Man, but just like, I've never been. I've never been, and I hate it, but like... Because <laughs> you see these people talking, like I heard this guy bragging, he was like, he goes to Burning Man every year, he's like, yeah, my kid doesn't have a birth... Oh, because they're all, this is what I have to say, they're all obsessed with being off the grid. You know, like they don't want to be a part of like society. So I heard this guy bragging, he's like, yeah, my kid doesn't have a birth certificate or a social security number. I'm like, oh, really? Well, I wonder who in 50 years is going to be doing yard work for middle-class Latino families. <laughs> Your child. So my boyfriend, I have to tell you this story. So my boyfriend really wanted me to meet, is this the Burning Man table right here? <laughs> so my boyfriend really wanted me to meet his friend. He's like, we go to Burning Man together every year. You know, she's so awesome. Turns out she's one of those girls who's like really awesome to men and then a total bitch to women. <laughs> and so let me just set the stage. So she's this white chick, red dreadlocks. We're in Austin, I'm talking to her. Okay, first of all, she has a tattoo of angel wings on her breastplate. Okay, wrong side. <laughs> Oh, and her name is Flapjack. And so, <laughs> Flapjack is sitting there holding court, and she start. do you guys know her? Because everyone has to have their own name. Okay, so, she, so Flapjack is holding court, and she starts bragging about dumpster diving. And so, I'm assuming she's talking about an art project, you know, because everyone at Burning Man's like, oh, here's my art project, and they just bedazzled a school bus. So I'm like, oh, is this for your art project? And she goes, not for art, 
for food. And so I start freaking out because I think I've offended her. So I, it's, you know, now it's like I'm his fiance. I'm trying to be nice. I'm like, oh, well, you know, sometimes uh, I used to waitress and I would steal people's chicken wings off their plate. So I totally get what you mean. And this girl turns to me and says, oh, you're not a square at all, are you? Okay, first of all, I love the idea of a stuck up bitch who dumpster dives. Oh. I'm such a square with my birth certificate and car insurance and unpierced genitals and food I've put in a refrigerator like a real loser. So then I wiped my ass with a vegan wrap and threw it in the closest trash can for a flapjack to munch on. Glad that you guys are all here. I'm so excited that everyone came out. It is, by the way, I've been on the road and all I do is sit in my hotel room, watch TLC. Anyone else? <laughs> you know when network's good when two shows just got canceled this week because of Christian child molesters. Okay, toddlers and tiaras, 19 kids and counting, cake boss, fabulous cakes, DC cupcakes, hoarders buried a lot. TLC should stand for Toddlers, Lunatics, and Cake. It's the only channel we have in this country that's supposed to be dedicated to learning. And it has shows almost exclusively about little people in cake. There's this show, My Strange Addiction. Okay, this girl, you see this one where this girl's like, I can't stop eating toilet paper. And then this other girl's like, I can't stop eating dryer sheets. A good place to sneak in dryer sheets is the movie theater. I'm like, it's not illegal to eat dryer sheets, ma'am. You can just walk on in with those. The best one I saw though, there was this girl. Okay, her name was Charmisa. And you know her parents meant to call her Charisma. But they spelled it wrong. So now she's going by Charmisa. This girl, probably because her name's a birth certificate typo, she is now addicted to eating her couch. So her roommates leave, she gets on the floor, unzips the cushion, and just starts eating the foam. And TLC must think we're so stupid. They're like, these are dangerous addictions that should not be attempted at home. She's eating her couch. Charmisa has been addicted to cushion for over three years. Over the course of her addiction, she's eaten 29 chairs, a bunk bed, and a settee. I would rather be under a bridge injecting heroin into my face than be addicted to cushion. Please, man, I'll suck your dick for a futon. Oh, yeah. This is what we're addicted to? And then right after that is this show called Freaky Eaters. This girl's like, I'm addicted to cheesy potatoes. Uh, everyone's addicted to cheesy potatoes. They're good. I could have told you you were addicted to cheesy potatoes 240 pounds ago. This woman has eaten nothing but cheesy potatoes for two decades. Somehow she has a husband. And so her intervention is he's frying her up some broccoli. So he's trying to get her to eat broccoli. And then he tries to feed it to her and she's just like, oh, 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 oh. And she collapses on the floor. And then they always bring in like these fake like therapists, a food trauma therapist, Sunrise Stevens. It's like always a fake name. So she goes and like picks this girl up off the floor. She's like, oh, I've got a surprise for you. And she takes her outside to their like cul-de-sac and all of a sudden, this dump truck starts coming towards them full of potatoes and they dump them on her head. And then the woman's like, what do you want to say to the potatoes? And she's like, put some cheese on oh, no. Costco, you guys like Costco? The membership fee is worth the high you get from the forklift exhaust. Kirkland diamonds, anyone? I'm not afraid to get my diamonds where I get my salsa. 
Tiffany's is great, but I can't eat a churro while I check out. <laughs> They have this new thing at the Costco by my house. It's called a pizza hotline, and it is a rotary phone that is hanging on a column. So while you're waiting in line with your 4,000 bags of cashews, you can pick this up and order a hot, tasty pizza. So on your way out then, you can then eat the pizza, bring it home. Okay, if you wanna know how gross this pizza is, you just have to look at the pigeons who are eating the crumbs. They all have broken wings, milky eyes. Type 2 diabetes. <laughs> Do you get it? I'm fancy. <laughs> I put tassels on things. I have it on my toothbrush. I have it on my vibrator. <laughs> That's just turned into a dreadlock, so. <laughs> Thank you. I really want to perform for the troops. I'm just waiting for a war to break out at the Four Seasons Maui at Wailea. <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> I'm from a place called Rockford, Illinois. Has anyone heard of this place? <laughs> they just erected a billboard in my hometown as you enter the city, congratulating the number one Mexican restaurant in the city. It's called Taco Bell. <laughs> and you keep seeing everyone there is on a bike, but like in California, if you're on a bike, it's because you care about the environment. But in the Midwest, it's because you have a DUI. <laughs> They've all got their like cases of beer on the handlebars. And... I, was, uh, I was at the DMV, I got a new car, and uh, I was at the DMV getting it registered, and now they're giving out free AIDS tests while you wait in line at the DMV. Now the only thing worse than waiting in line at the DMV is finding out you have AIDS. <laughs> Finally, they've combined those two events in a gal's life. Can you imagine your driver's license picture after you found out you have AIDS? I uh, guess I'll uncheck the donor box. <laughs> I have a new car as Sirius Radio, so I've just been obsessed with like, what are the people listening to? Okay, I just keep flipping stations. Country music, anyone? Thank you, one person. Okay, can you tell me if this is a song? Because this is what I heard on the country station. You can't play with your toys till your nuggets are done. <laughs> Is that song called, Why Kids Are Fat? <laughs> I was at the beach and I would see like so many of these obese toddlers like wearing a string bikini. Like, I'm not saying it's not sexy. I just think it's inappropriate. <laughs> and then pop music, okay. Here's what's happening in music right now. If you really wanna make money, you have to write a song that makes teenagers think they can be rich and famous without doing anything. <laughs> That's like every song. You're beautiful, no matter what they say. Actually, you're 16, you've never read a book in your life, all you eat is chips, and you're pregnant. <laughs> but Katy Perry says I'm a firework. <laughs> Technically, you're an obese Latina goth. <laughs> this girl is on fire. Stop eating flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> Any pregnant teens in the house? <laughs> did you hear about this? Did you guys hear about this teenager? She just left her baby in the dryer of a laundromat. It's so sad. Can you believe people still use laundromats? <laughs> you know what's worse though than the music is the talk radio? Okay, whoever has invented Playboy radio has forgotten the one thing you don't want playmates to do is talk. <laughs> and they give advice. So these guys will call in, and it's just like, oh yeah, uh, uh, how you doing, Timber? They're always like mid-masturbation. Uh, listen, you know, I'm a retired vet. Uh. Oh my God, I love animals. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll bet you do, Timber. Listen, you know, I need some advice. Uh, I really wanna fuck my stepdaughter. Well, one thing I will say is that my stepdad waited for me to move out of the house before he fucked me, and I really respect him for the art. <laughs> like these girls do this thing now where they say a statement, but they phrase it like a question. And if you talk like that, you're ruining the women's movement. <laughs> No 
other job can you get away with talking like that? This is your pilot speaking. We just got your x-ray back. I have a dream. <laughs> That's how they laugh too. It's not even a laugh. It's like a scream with spaces in it. <laughs> Somebody help her. Apparently there's like all these new ways of talking. Like NPR just did a special on it. That way it's called Upspeak. And as we're getting stupider as a culture, there's all these new ways we're talking. Like there's also um, the growl. Do you know about that? <laughs> like hot chicks do it a lot. Cause sometimes when you're really hot, it's hard to talk. <laughs> the Kardashians do it. I have a question. Why does everyone want to take a picture of my butt? Uh, I have a question. How did an Armenian family of whores capture the heart of America? <laughs> when I prepare for a part, I like to study the lines of Adderall that I've laid out in front of me. Anyone else? What do you have, ma'am? Besides giant breasts. I cannot believe that. It's very distracting. Do you have any Adderall? Oh, okay. Not right now. You t I know you take it all too fast. You like to party while you make to-do lists. How, if you don't have ADD right now, you're not paying attention. How can we all not have ADD? With the emails and the apps and everything's urgent. I feel like I'm gonna crash my car reading an alert for a Groupon for sweat yoga. Why do I have to sign into Facebook to pay my water bill? I can't tell what causes me more stress. Not being able to remember my Apple ID or growing up without a father. <laughs> this is a weird time we're living in. Like right now, there are people just sitting on the toilet with their phone, just like, never gonna fuck her, never gonna fuck her. <laughs> She's not gonna fuck you either. You know 50% of Tinder swipes are done on the toilet. And then you press a button and some stranger in a Dodge Caravan comes and picks you up. When do the lift murders start? What is happening? I was in a Scion listening to the Cranberries the other day. I'm like, I have a nice car. How have we all fallen for this? Do you guys do Lyft? <laughs> Lyft is good because it gives people who live out of their cars a chance to work from home. So I think that's really positive. Uber. Uber's good if, Uber's good if you want to combine your commute with a history lesson on Armenian genocide. No? Have you noticed, I know this is a touchy subject in San Francisco, but have you noticed that the cab drivers now are like, they notice there's all this competition, so they all like accept credit cards all of a sudden. Like, they're all in a good mood. Every foreign cabbie is in such a good mood, you think his wife just miscarried a girl. <laughs> the way I shop is different now because of technology. Like I used to go to stores and like compare prices and try things on and maybe go back and get something. Now here's what I do. I sit in my house, I'll smoke a little pot. I'll dream something up. Like I need a gold stapler. <laughs> throws it over the fence. I'm like, I was just kidding. You can get as specific as you want. Like, I want a cornflower blue kimono. And then it just comes, that is not a good way to shop. What's gonna happen to us? I recently dislocated my shoulder. Don't worry, I won't talk about it long. <laughs> Nobody cares about your pain, I know. Whenever I want someone to stop talking to me, I'm like, ugh, I start talking about my rotator cuff. <laughs> But here's what I don't understand. I'll go online to try to like get some solace. So I'll like be online, like what are some of the best exercises? Who are on these Yahoo answer boards? They're just giving paragraphs of information. Like you'll see these people like, well, I've never dislocated my shoulder personally, but about three years ago, a friend of mine at the office dislocated his shoulder. It's like, how do you have time to be on this website? You got a password? You filled in a captcha? Like. I work 30 days a year and I can barely handle life. 
There's just like so much pressure to keep up with all of this and none of it matters. And I just have to keep looking at the same celebrities. Madonna's been spreading open her legs since I was in seventh grade. <laughs> J-Lo in her butt. Like, it's just like, do you know how many times a day I have to look at J-Lo's ass? It just comes into my feed. I don't care about J-Lo's ass. J-Lo looks like a lion who works at Sephora. Like, what is that look? Everyone's branding themselves. Everyone's taking pictures of themselves constantly. Okay, I, my mom has Gwyneth Paltrow's new cookbook. Okay, there is a picture of herself on every page of the cookbook. And then she's like telling people, don't buy your food at a grocery store, grow it in your own backyard. It's like, uh, I have two dogs with IBS and the Los Angeles water is toxic. This is 2015 Gwyneth, not the Jamestown settlement. Oprah, Oprah, what is an Oprah chai latte? Why is that on every, I travel the country, every Starbucks in our country has Oprah's signature on it. Okay, I know it's hard to make fun of Oprah. She means so much to sad white women everywhere, but just like, hear me out. Imagine the level of insanity that has to be happening in your head. If you have a magazine for 20 years now and it's called your name, and then every month you're like, who should be on the cover? Me! <laughs> One time she shared the cover and it was with a picture of herself as a child. <laughs> Sometimes I'll rent the color purple and just fast forward to where she gets beat up. <laughs> it relaxes me. I've been doing stand-up in LA to prepare for this special. And what happens in LA is they don't have like hosts. Everyone has to bring up themselves because there's like, you know, a lot of celebrities working out their material. There's, you know, it's, there could be open micers all on the same show. And I was performing at the comedy store and, okay, has anyone seen Martin Lawrence perform lately? He is a master at pussy jokes. I don't care if it's red pussy, white pussy, deep pussy, shallow pussy, mossy pussy, plaid pussy. It was like in Forrest Gump when they talk about the shrimps. <laughs> that is how much pussy he can describe. And Martin is killing. He is like, this pussy, that pussy, this pussy, thank you, good night. He throws down the mic and he gets a standing ovation. <laughs> And I'm waiting to go on. And then he picks up the mic and he's like, okay, who's next? And he was supposed to look on the sheet, which he didn't. So then the waitress whispers from the side, Natasha Legero. And Martin from stage is like, who? And they're like, Natasha Legero. And Martin's like, I'm black, I can't say that shit. And so, first of all, if I said I couldn't say someone's name because I'm white, I wouldn't be able to leave my house for six years. So I'm in the back of the room and I just yell, Martin, just say Natasha. And Martin from stage says, bitch, I don't work for you. <laughs> so that was my entrance. <laughs> so I come on stage. I ask everyone to please sit down because he had got a standing ovation. And I mean, I'm humiliated. I mean, this is Martin fucking Lawrence <laughs> from such TV shows as Martin. <laughs> So I do my set, it does not go well. I just wanna leave. So then I'm done with my set, I'm like, thank you. I go outside, I'm waiting for my car, and then all of a sudden, I swear to God, I hear this guy say, Natasha. I turn around, I'm like, oh, Martin, that was a three-syllable word, good job. <laughs> and he's like, come here. And so I'm like, yeah, Martin. <laughs> and he's like, I don't work for you. So I handed him a W-9 and he's been on the payroll ever since. <laughs> Kissing my ass! Thank you so much, San Francisco. Thank you for having me. It's been great, thank you. Do you have anything for indigestion? Why is there a man in the women's bathroom? I don't believe in a gender binary. Okay, well, I need something. I shouldn't have eaten during my abortion. Yeah, always decline the meal. Abortion 101. 
You really know your stuff, huh? I don't want to have children. If I'm going to lose my looks, it's going to be because of coke or meth or something else fun. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like all that time spent on something that doesn't really matter. You know, time you could be spending on your podcast. I mean, what is time really? Hmm? <sighs> We're all going to be dead in a hundred years. And nobody's going to remember you're special. <sighs> that makes me feel so much better. You've given me a lot more than tampons and a mint. <sighs> now I have the strength to get on with my career. Have fun. Oh, senor. See?